Hey, what up YouTube? It's your man, Bouchon Glover, and I have a reaction. Uh, I have a reaction to the MLK Day special, which featured a panel, um, which included Charles Barkley and Eric Dyson, to name a few. Now, Eric Dyson is an American educator who is baked into the Democratic Party because when I heard what this brother, what our brother was talking about when it came to uh, voter rights, uh, it was a little misleading. It was just a little misleading. So now the days that we're living in right now, we cannot even allow our parents, grandparents, brothers, sisters, our siblings to, you know, uh, mislead us. So the days are long gone where we allow a educator who works for the system to actually tell us about what's going on when it comes to politics. Now, the key to voter rights is not making it harder to vote, but making it harder to cheat. Now, federalizing state elections is not a good thing. There's two sides to every story. Now, you got to understand, anytime that the Democratic Party is in office, they're going to fight for the rights of their democracy. Anytime the Republicans are in office, we have four years of them fighting for their democracy. Uh, okay, or the, or the Republic. But one thing we can attest to as a man, as men, as humans, you know, and more importantly, alpha males who really care about our communities and the survival of the entire black race, we can't sit back and, and be misled, uh, bamboozled, and running amok. Now, Charles Barkley said it best. He said, both of them are full of you know what. And we know this, but when you have a president that's in office who is so detached from not only society, but from himself. Now, he named a lot of uh, races and segregationists that back in the day stood in the front of voter rights legislation. He named Bull Connor. He named the governor, George Wallace. He even named uh, a corn pop which was a Congressman Byrd from West Virginia. But one thing that he didn't mention is that all three that were aforementioned were Democrats. So maybe Joe Biden forgot that he was one of those segregationist Democrats, but we was reminded during the primaries when Kamala Harris clowned him on national television and said that he was against busing and said that, you know, we know the story. And then Pete Buttigieg heard President Biden call her a piece of work, okay? So listen to what I'm saying. And I'm, I'm, I'm treading lightly here because I, I don't want this video to be, um, you know, put in a different place, put in a matrix, because for whatever reason, they know, you know, uh, knowledge is power, so they don't want us to have power. So they will get our, uh, our legislators on record and they'll get our educators on record to actually say things to basically promote an agenda. Now, when you got, you know, black men um, sounding like elected officials and politicians, these are people that has have a, vest, a vested interest. These are people whose money is more than likely tied up with the Democratic Party. Because nowadays you have whites, women, blonde, blue eyed white women, and you have black educators out in front of this because the sisters are distancing themselves for as far as they for as far as they can from the Biden administration as well as elected officials. Now during the Trump administration, you know, we literally saw our elected officials, our black caucus members go go literally go viral every day. But now we can't even find them because of how spiraling out of control and how they're going to have to hit that eject button or they're going to have to crash and be the collateral damage with the with the ship. Because one thing that I heard and I I, I go against it. One thing that I heard and the, the Biden administration Two things. One thing was the races for the soul of America. Clearly, the soul is dead. The soul of America is clearly dead and is very elderly because we're watching the soul of America destroy the country. The soul of America is dead. And then the build back better. How can you build back better if you're not even guaranteed an opportunity to build it back? But one thing we do know to build back better, you got to break it down to its last compound. So thanks, Democrats. Thank uh, our politicians and thank our Black Caucus for basically leading us into a burning house. You guys are on your own now. Listen, the world hates what's going on in terms of the division. President Biden signed up as the president to basically bridge gaps, to, to bridge the, the gaps 
But when you demonize Trump supporters, when you call white Americans Neanderthals and you talk about and say racist things, not realizing that those, the context of the racism that you're speaking of totally was 100% at the time with the Democratic Party. Nothing switched. It's always been about white supremacy. That's the common denominator. Whites used to hate and fight whites, just like the Crips and the Bloods, or just like blacks fight amongst each other. But whites realize that if we just go with white, then we could take our ethnicity off and we can be the majority. So this is where we step in at. And this is where I'm calling out all our elected officials and our educators, because until we amend that 13th Amendment, nothing will change. And anything outside of that is uncivilized, asinine, stupid, and beneath the modern man and the and the uh, future of black America. So whether you want to be on the right side of history or not, you have to stand on the grassroots levels with your community, with your uh, 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 selected officials. When I say select, it's a big difference between being elected and selected. But God has selected us in these days and times to speak truth to power and to stand up against unrighteousness and fight for righteousness. And this is how we win. And before we can do that or have any conversation, we gotta talk about the 13th Amendment because they make money off of uh, the deaths, killings, crimes, drugs, everything that's going on, they make money. This is why they're allowing it to go on. And they don't even have, have any type of cognitive uh, 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 thought of how things could change, but we got the blueprint, we can and we will. So like I said, our elect, our uh, educators, we're not sitting, we're not going to sit back and just let you guys just hoodwink, bamboozle us and, 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 and have us running them up. We've seen these things before. So you guys are on record. So regardless of what you guys are saying, everybody should have the right to vote. Everybody should have the right to vote, right? But everybody that has the right to vote should at least be an American citizen and should at least be identified. If I can't go and get a burger without my vaccination, uh, a proof of vaccination and my ID, then that's the at least or the bare minimum that I would need to vote. So with this, these things that's going on, don't be fooled because they're trying to trick us. Because what they're trying to do, they're trying to federalize voting, meaning the federal level, the uh, the government can actually dictate what goes on in all 50 states. And that's not America. These are the United States of America. And until we understand that, then we're going to sit back and be the pawns to the uh, powers that be because the powers that be, they don't love us. They like to sitting down, looking at us, giving us our rations and controlling us. But these days and times that we're living in, we're, 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 just, we're finally making a decision to actually fight back. So when I saw Eric Dyson on uh, TNT on a panel with the, uh, the uh, basketball um, commentators to Charles Barkley's of the world. And, and and they actually had a war done was on there as well. And they were talking about voter rights, but there's no way we could talk about uh, voting rights and, and, and not be honest. Okay. We have to be honest. Okay. Moving forward, there's no way this country can continue on if we have a criminalization clause. And until we realize that, then we, we're going to have some issues. So I'm going to be pushing back against all our elected officials and our politicians to basically have them speaking on amending uh, the 13th Amendment or at least having a, 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 a reaction from them, because I don't think they really understand that until uh, we are freed on the federal level, okay? Just like the government is trying to federalize the elections, they have federalized prisons, okay? So if you're not in a state prison, you're in a federal prison, you literally are a slave. And the 13th Amendment reads, neither slavery nor involuntary servitude unless criminalized. And you know without a shadow of a doubt that the entire black race is the criminals. And this is why they eat so good. And this is why they keep the scam scam going because on a, on a federal level, we still slaves. And until... We can have that conversation. We ain't talking about nothing else. And with that being said, hey, straight politics coming at you. And we're going to be in front of this because it's better to be proactive than to be reactive. And like I said, we're not as dumb as you think we are. We let you do what you do by being silenced. But now there's some pushback. So now you guys are going to either have to get out the way or step your game up and understand what we're trying to do on the grassroots levels, not on no federal level, not on the level that you own, not baked into any political party, because clearly the Democratic Party, by definition, means ruled by the devil.